Okay, everyone, welcome to Trips Art Class. Today we have a very talented artist from oh, Georgia, <laughs> originally from Los Angeles, California. We have JR Mounts. How you doing, JR? How you doing, my friend? I'm doing great, man. I'm doing great. Now, do I call you Terry or Mr. Trip? You know what? You can call me Terry. My students call me Mr. <laughs> Trip or Trip. Okay. You know? I have a lot of, one, literally one time I had a new kid come into my class and he, he was new and he said, um, he goes, what's your name? And I said, oh, my name is Mr. Trip. And he goes, no, serious. <laughs> my name awesome. is Mr. Trip. And he goes, so I can call you Mr. Trip and not get in trouble. And I'm like, yeah, that's my that's name. Awesome. That's fantastic. So, JR Mounts, we're super excited to um, have you here. I've seen some of your work online. I feel like you're really tied in. Um, even though you're in Georgia, you're really tied in still with a lot of the Los Angeles artists. Um, see that you are uh, you participate in some of these uh, comic cons, too, correct? I do. Yes, so, sir. And the work that's really stood out to me that you've been creating is a series called The Shadows of Ourselves, right? Yes, sir. Can you tell us a little bit about those? Right now, we're looking at a piece on the screen where we have some students that have uh, are, are in graduation gowns and caps and other ones that are um, on the phone and look like they're from home. Can you explain that body of work in that piece? Sure. The, the whole idea behind the shadows of ourselves is that there are two stories going on. There's in the foreground you see in the, in the bright, strong uh, art is what's going on at the time. In this case, in this space... Everybody's getting their their graduation. In the shadows, there is another story going on. Sometimes it's it's what's going on in our head. Sometimes it's what's going on behind our intentions or our actions or inactions. In this case, they're all graduating. Yeah. And what I wanted to celebrate, especially now, th these stories for the shadows of ourselves are about people, not Batman, not Robin. They're about people and and things that can really happen. And what I saw happen, especially last year when I, when I made this, was especially high school students. High school is hard, as you know, Mr. Trip, you know. To have to go through what we've gone through through COVID and have to be a child trying to graduate and get through school, uh, that is one of the hardest things in the world. And in this case, for those who graduated, I just wanted to celebrate that because I don't know any other time that was any rougher on any generation than this one. And I wanted to celebrate that because it really means something to work that hard and get that graduation. And that's what this piece was for. It's called Congratulations, right? And it's all the different ways that um, students got through to graduate. You know, and, and these young adults, uh, they are, are on the next step of life. And to get that graduation in the hardest time in, in our history uh, was something to celebrate. So in the background, they're all graduating as if they're all together on the pulpit, throwing up their caps and gowns and getting that graduation. And I see your artwork. It's I mean, I, I see a lot of artwork um, from students, you know, from the art world, just from uh, going to school and get my MFA, studied artwork, art for a number of years. And Look at you. Th yeah, and there's been seldom uh, times, few times, where I've actually seen artwork literally bring tears to people's eyes. And this, a lot of this artwork, um, I've literally seen it on my phone, taken screenshots, and just had to show family members and friends. And there has been multiple times when people saw certain uh, pieces of your illustrations and they literally started to get teared up now the next one i'm looking at here it's 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 i mean it really reminds me of me uh, growing up it's a little boy sitting on the bed playing the guitar and in his, <laughs> in his, in his head like oh man you, you have like acdc there <laughs> you know? yeah i do well because you know again it's real stories it's real people and i'm a guitarist and as you know like to be a kid and want to emulate your heroes, in my case it was ACDC or KISS or whatever, but anybody trying to be, you know, Jason Derulo or whatever, you're emulating your idol. It's hard. When you start trying to do this, you realize this is a lot more difficult than this guy makes it look or this lady makes it look. And I wanted to capture the moment where you got the F chord, the barred F yeah. chord. You got that sucker and <laughs> you finally feel like you are an ACDC. Now you yeah. captured the hardest thing in the world. The first time I learned what a bar chord was, and I heard that you had to 
push down all the strings with one finger and still I Horrible. was like that's impossible. Horrible. Yeah. yeah. The bar part was the worst because you had to bar everything. Yeah. But the worst one because of where the tension is on the on the neck yeah. was yeah. the F because it's that first and there's no more tense string than then that first chord. And the, I think the only harder chord for me at the time was the open D. Yeah. And that's because it was just it was like an arthritic, yeah. you know, a hand coordination. But the bar chord, when you got the F chord, I, I just I needed to celebrate that moment. And, yeah, and that's again, it. that's what the shadows are about. The shadows are about celebrating people's intimate moments uh, and, and saying, look, you know, normal people are fantastic. You find their stories, yeah. they, they will wow you like nobody's business. And let's go ahead. Oh, I just looked at another one. This one's really neat. I got a bunch of them. Let's kind of run through them <laughs> quickly. Um, this one is you know, a, a male and a female. It looks like they're on a bus or something. They're both reading books about maybe finding love. And then in the shadow, you see them together. And the next one we have, oh, man, this one's super uh, powerful. It's um, a, a man sitting at a desk. And in the shadow, you see like he's getting ready to jump off a building. And then look, maybe his wife or a, a, a female character is looking at him like she's going to save him. I mean, stuff like this, you, you, it's, it's super powerful where you take these, um, these cartoony uh, comic illustrations, but they're not cartoony in uh, contents. They're very, very serious and powerful. Like, um, like what, it, like what, what brings, I mean, what, I don't know. It's just, you, I, I feel like, where do you get this boldness from? Because, I mean, you're bold with this art. The, the main idea about all art is we are expressing ourselves as artists. You know, we feel red, we feel blue, we feel orange, depending on how we feel. Uh, being a black and white artist, my background when I first started doing cartooning, I do watercolor now, but in the beginning, I was doing cartooning because it was like Peanuts or Calvin Hobbes. And it was what I loved, it's what I knew, and I wanted to bring smiles to their faces. Um, this series, although it is cartoonish characters, the cartoony style lessens the blow of some of the messages that are going on here. Because, like, let's take the guy who's about ready to jump off the building. In the foreground, it's a guy who's just, he's, he's frustrated, he feels like a failure, he's, he's just in the worst mood. And let's just say it's his wife, all right? She's just doing something as simple as carrying the laundry, and she sees him just devastated. He's not coming to her. He's not opening up. But she can see him devastated. He feels like he's at the end of his rope. He's just – he's a complete failure. And what he has to know is that no matter how hard this gets for him, she's going to be there for him. Yeah. That is yeah. their commitment. She will rescue him. In fact, the piece is called I'll Rescue You. Yes. And it was that moment to talk about relationships where – when we are at our lowest, there is always someone there waiting to, not, to help us out. Yeah, man. And you know, you know, you use the you use the basket, the laundry basket, as a way to like open it up for like the the, the thing that the guy can fall down onto. But it's just to let it's to let people know how important they are. It almost brings me back to a series from the eighties, The Wonder Years, because huh? I would watch Love The it. Wonder Years, and it's just like such a simple like suburban series, but then. After you watch a few episodes, the content is like super powerful and super right. deep. And it's like you almost want to have everyone watch that episode. And when I see art like this and a lot of other people as well, because people share these online like crazy, they want other people to see art like this. It has like a powerful message to it. Now, this one, I feel like this one might have been the ones that almost made my wife tear up. Um, it's, it looks like an old, a woman, an older woman and her older son, and he's bringing her food, but in the mm -hmm. shadow is a young mother and her son. And that one just really like pulls at the heartstrings in my family right now, because, you know, we, my wife and I just had our first child and, and he's sure. a young boy. And it's just like, man, this is it. And it's just like, it, it hits it so well. And then this other one, like, all these, like we see these and we're like, man, we want to buy this one. We want to buy this one. <laughs> like you, you, you're, we're so excited. And here's one where you have this uh, dog and it looks like a full grown dog and it's at the vets. And then you have this maybe husband and wife and maybe they're having to put it down. There's a shadow of a vet in the background. And then you have like the shadows are them being younger and playing fetch with the dog. And 
even that one, like when my wife and I uh, first got married, we went out, we bought a dog. And it's like, it's like, yeah. man, you're just pulling, pulling out the heartstrings again, like all of these. And then we go on. Uh, yeah. And then the next one's just super powerful. And this one being a high school teacher, it just really um, speaks to me when I look at the lives of some of my students, whereas we have a, um, a, a, a boy and he's being tug award by his mother and father. And it's like, it, it looks, you, you, we see like the common image in the cartoon, but then the shadow in the background just really captures like the, the struggle that's really going on. And, even being a high school teacher and just seeing students come to school with like, you know, agony and pain and yeah. maybe stuff that their parents don't see. But as a teacher, I see like that tug of war that's taken place in their lives. So it's, it's just like amazing. And then man, and the next one I just pulled up on the screen is, um, it looks like, Oh, this one's super powerful. And they're all super powerful too. Or <laughs> hilarious. Super powerful. I have some funny hilarious. ones. Yeah. And this one's an old man kissing an old woman in bed. Um, and then it's like, maybe she's already passed away and then her shadows kissing him. I don't, I don't understand. Can you explain that one a little bit more? Sure. The, the point about these stories is I'm always trying to show a, a, a maybe a rough moment. But that there's always hope. The dog, for instance, anyone's ever had a dog that's had to had to pass, you know, we will always remember them as that fun loving puppy. In the husband and wife, what's happening is he's saying goodbye for the last time as she slips away. And in shadow, she her soul, she is there kissing him as he's kissing her. And in the broken heart or in the heart that's going on, her half is is fading away into a bunch of little hearts as she as she leaves this world. The the underlying message is that it's love again, love and love. Yes. It will always be as as he kisses her goodbye. She is waiting for him on the other side, and that love, even though it disperses, it was it is still there in other hearts, just waiting to be pulled to the other side. Um, because anytime anyone's ever had to say goodbye. We feel the loss on one side. We don't know what's on the other side. We hope we know what's on the other side. But, you know, in, in my fairy tale <laughs> world, I will see her again. She will see me again. And that's the hope behind these, these, these pieces is that, yes, we're going through something rough right now. Um, the tug of war, okay? These two parents think that they're both right. And they're pulling this kid like, you know, what you're late. You shouldn't have showed up. Well, I wouldn't have showed up if I wasn't late. You know, and they're, what they don't realize is right there, there's this kid who's holding out his hand for mom, who's not holding his hand, as his books are dropping behind him, as dad's not picking them up. And they just both want what they want in the tug of war up top. And I'm just showing the struggle of divorce and what happens with children. They feel like there's this flag that just never gets anywhere. Yeah. And mm -hmm. the one thing about the series, especially, I, I'm mostly a humorous guy. I started writing, you know, a series called Fried Pickle Noir about a fried pickle detective named Cucumber Soup. That's what I was doing. I was making people laugh at Sin City Meets Veggie Tales. Yeah. But as you progress as an artist, you know, your tastes change. You need to challenge yourself. And what I wanted mostly in this series was to tell human stories that maybe no one has represented before. And the thing I find mostly when I'm at conventions, and this is a fairly new um, project. It's only maybe about a year old. I've got about 100 pieces now, and I'm going to collect it because I first showed them off a year, exactly a year ago on um, this coming weekend. And I just kind of put them out and you know, let, let people see what, what the next phase of what I was doing. Look, the pickle guy is doing something different, you know. And I've got others where dogs are sniffing each other's butts down one area. In the shadow, they're shaking each other's hand, you know. Although, hey, you know, pleased hey, to meet was, you. That was really funny, by the way. I like that one. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you, you can't ever go wrong with that. Yeah. But, like, say the one with the with the older lady and her, her grown son. He's helping her out. That piece is called My Turn, Mom. Oh. Because in the piece, she always took care of him. He was always her little boy. And now it's his turn to return this to his mom, who can't get up as much and as well. And I'm taking care of my mother-in-law right now. And that's what's going on here. So 
what I found is as people were flipping through, oh, look at the dog butts, oh, look at this, then they'd stop, yep. and they would just stop dead in their tracks. And my, my first thought was like, oh, I must have gotten a weird one. But then they start bawling. Yep. <laughs> and I didn't expect that. I didn't expect that. I mean, as an artist, I know when I touch myself and, and, and you put yourself in the place of that subject and you try to hope that everybody else gets the idea. Yeah. Um, and these were very raw at the time. So some I would draw from my own experiences, others from someone else's experiences. And in drawing that those really difficult moments, they're really hard emotionally because you have to be true to both sides. Yeah. Um, you have to be the kid that's being torn apart by his parents that aren't paying attention. So you have to empathize with both sides. You've got to be true to both those characters. And in order to do that, you've got to make sure you invest emotionally. And when I'm done with that piece and I, I'll set it out for the world – uh, hopefully they get it. And what I was finding was I would get absolute guffaws and groans and laughs. And then next it would be devastating tears. And suddenly my booth would become a psychotherapy ward where we would just like, you know, get into an area and we would start talking about like, are you okay? Or, you know, and they just had to express themselves. So we'd talk about their mother we'd talk about their families. And it was therapy for a while. And, and that's how some of these pieces were, were were being represented someone said i finally know what i feel like this is how i feel and that's how these things would start taking off and then i have more ideas i never let anybody tell me what to draw yeah. um you know unless it's like a special drawing for them for a commission but most of the time i just wanted to tell a normal person's story um i've got a couple of about ptsd and i found that like a couple of veterans who couldn't describe their own ptsd from being in in, in war um, would find that that PTSD piece that I drew helped them talk about it. And I can't tell you how many times in the last year I've talked to people about their, their lives, their experiences, all from just a simple drawing. Yeah. And to me, that is, that is the most precious moment of my career, to be able to talk to people about art that moved them. And as you're talking about the uh, booths that you were at, you're talking about comic conventions, right? Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Yes. I travel around the U.S. at conventions of all kinds, comical conventions, sci-fi conventions, fantasy conventions. Not that we're having any now. <laughs> but, you know, yes, you know, any venue that would have an artist uh, be able to put their, their work up. Uh, and again, like I said, I used to just go around saying, this is my pickle book. This is my pickle book. I've got 10 pickle books, you know. Yeah. But now I've been turning to fine art, watercolors and things like that. And this series was my, my most recent um, phase, I should say. And uh, it's been the most emotionally rewarding I think I've done. Oh, definitely. And as I switched through it, this was the other one that I was really kind of um, tempted to buy. It's a turtle <laughs> eating some paper. And then in the shadow, it's Raphael, which is yeah. in the paper is like a bow staff. And it's just like, so you have stuff like this, which is just totally comical as well. And I think that really, you know, how you're talking about people go through and they laugh and laugh. And then it's like, ooh. And like this next one that just comes up, it's super powerful. It looks like an old man was on a ventilator. And then probably his daughter is holding a pitcher. And then she's thinking yes. back to him holding her as a little girl. I mean, just stuff that um, really is real. And this is stuff a lot of people don't talk about in art, but it relates to the human experience. And part of my background, I was a, a literature major and a psychology major, so this stuff really uh, hits with me in my undergrad years. But That's I fantastic. remember one of my professors saying that true literature relates to the human experience. And I think we can kind of take that quote and apply it to art, too. Often, oftentimes, art and really good art relates to the human experience. And I feel I like a lot of your illustrations here are just that they are relating to the human experience, things that we've gone through or things that we might not want to admit, but someday we are going to go through and that's haunts in our minds. So when we see these, we, it, it really does pull at us. Um, and it's really, really powerful. And then the next one, man, this one totally applied to me for, Four and a half months ago with my son, it's a nurse handing over an infant 
to a disheveled looking dad, which was me after not sleeping for a while. And then yeah. the shadow is a clown uh, with like this, um, uh, looks like maybe a drink stacked high with a bomb and he's a clumsy elephant. And it's just yeah. like, that one's so relatable for dads that hold their baby for the first time. And it's just super fragile, but to the nurse, like the nurse, like it's almost like a clown where it's like, she don't yeah. care. You know, she's just this is like, here's your, here's your child. Yeah. And you're like, wait, 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 I'm going to break it. <laughs> exactly. that, that piece is actually called fragile. Uh, yeah. And it's like so relatable. And then the next one is, uh, I mean, it's, it's a powerful one too. It's, I mean, I, I know the ones that I've chosen to kind of show here are really powerful pieces. And it's this old like dog that reminds me of the dog from the Sandlots. And then, huh. and, and then it says, Be le- beware of killer dog, no trespassing. And these people are behind the fence. And really it's just like, he's just this playful little dog in this like very um, maybe grotesque or older or monstrous uh, body. And it's like, I think that one relates we think about dogs, but we also maybe even relate to people as well, where sometimes people might feel like that. Like, you know, I might look like this. I might look like a monster or a giant or really intimidating or scary, but really I'm just kind of someone who wants to be playful and and care. Well, that piece is also about, you know, talking about how, Here's this dog that inside is just a puppy that wants to be loved. These kids have lost their ball over the danger zone. And this puppy that just wanted to play has been placed in this horrible environment. And it's been neglected in this environment. It looks like a completely dangerous environment. So everybody stays away. Even the, even the sign, yeah. the bad owner is put up there. Beware of killer dog. It's not a killer dog. Yeah. But people judge it as so because of the way it's being treated. And that is an allegory about the environment that people sometimes are placed in and then judged by despite what's actually going on in their heart. Yeah. And that's why that piece is called good dog. Yeah. I like that. Great. Title. And I had never seen the sandlot until I drew that. Cause everybody kept saying, Oh, you look, Oh, you drew the sandlot. I'm like, what the heck is the sandlot? And they're like, you're killing me smalls. I'm like, what does that even mean? You know, awesome. because when the sandlot came out, I, I was on stage. I was in a band. Yeah. I was, I was working on music. I wasn't working out. You know, yeah. See movies like that. So I saw the Sandlot because of this piece, and I'm like, "Oh my god, that <laughs> is the Sandlot." It is. That's but crazy. you know, and, and I have to good get Yeah. Um, and the next one, I think of this one a lot. When being a high school teacher, it's like a boy reading a computer science book, and he's being bullied <laughs> by people. But then it kind of like the shadows maybe possibly display the future or a possible future. Where it's like he's this maybe programmer, um, and, and maybe for Apple, and they're like just giving him his money for his product. Yeah, that really shows. Yeah. that he gets the last laugh. Yeah, and and you know you probably experienced this in your life. I know I have in my life where the the my friends that I had and the acquaintances I had in high school that were considered not cool or not popular or not part of the in crowd. A lot of them today, even though I'm not super close friends with all of them, I see them on Facebook, I see them on social media, and they're doing so well. Mm-hmm. Um, not all of them, but a lot of them are doing so well. And then some of these ones that, you know, they had their heyday in high school, right. some of them are really not doing well. And it's just weird how, like, things can turn in, like, 5, 10, 20, 30 years where it's just completely the opposite and and you displayed that really well. And this one is kind of inspiration, I think, for my students. And if you if you're one of those students that's just like working really really hard and trying to make good decisions in life, and maybe you know you're teased for that, maybe you're bullied, maybe you're um, maybe socially neglected. You know, it's just like mm-hmm. hang in there. You know, keep keep on that path, keep doing what you know you believe you should be doing because you know someday hopefully that's going to turn around. And all that hard work is going to really pay off. Well, the, the importance about, and, and, and especially high school, because I, I, I had a particularly rough time in high school because I, I moved a lot when I was a kid. So I never got to keep any of my friends. Mm. So by the time I landed my last few years in school, in high school, I was an outcast. I was somebody who um, didn't have a lot of friends 
And then I finally found a small clique of nerds, <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, like like-minded, like-minded musicians and yeah. geeks. And um, right yeah, here. we weren't popular. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We were not popular. And yeah. what I found out, what I know now is life is not high school, right? High school is a part of your life. It's probably the first step to pre-adulthood, yeah. but it's the most concentrated moment of your entire collegiate life, your entire school life, because not only are you learning to become who you are, but you're having to struggle with school too. What do I want to be? You're starting to figure out what am I going to do? What am I going to be? The next step is college to tell me that I'm going to be focusing on this path, or if you're not going to go to college, I went to work or I, you know, to be a musician. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, high school is your last half to moment. You have to go to high school. Okay. You can choose to go to college. You could choose not to go to college and go to work. doesn't matter. But the pressure that a, that, that a student has during the high school years is probably the most concentrated time in the world. You have to live at home, okay? But it's all pre-adulthood. And because of that, I always celebrate those who are not popular. Because when you're popular and everything's given to you, you have no idea that life is hard. Yeah. And when everything is given to you because you're so pretty or you're so good looking, you know, then you have no sense of, of responsibility. You have no sense of what the real world is, real world is because I don't care if you're, you know, the most popular person in high school. Once you leave high school, nobody cares. Yeah. Exactly. Nobody cares who you are. All right. It's like, look, you're going to be making the same money as that guy over there. Yeah. So the most important thing is, yes, like what you said, be true to who you are. Know what to say no to, all right? Know what to say yes to. Be willing to take a risk sometimes. Know to keep away from danger when you have. Yeah. Listen to your gut. Yeah. And, you know, we're always looking for this great experience. But, you know, the great experiences never stop. Yeah. You know, Trip, I'm 51 years old. I started drawing comics at 40, okay? So I have had my entire artistic career in the last 11 years start at the end of my music career. Okay, so, so the whole idea, is, and, and I say career, okay, I was working jobs just to pay for guitar strings, okay, so the fact is that your life never stops, your life never ends, all right, you get out of 12th grade, you go to college, after college, you get maybe, uh, maybe it's pre-med school or pre-law school, it doesn't matter, then you get out of all school, you enter life, life enters, you, you have so many stages in life too, life never stops, you never stop growing. Yeah. So the fact that at 40, I said, gee, I think maybe I'll draw a comic book, you know, yeah. it wasn't easy, but the idea is, all right, so at 40, uh, if you don't have everything figured out at 40, don't worry about it. At 50, you, you get a second chance. <laughs> and that brings me to the next picture, which is, um, it's like a little boy, or I think it's a little boy running up to his dad with some artwork to put up on the fridge. And then um, it looks like the Sistine Chapel in the background. So mm -hmm. it's like kind of um, showing in that shadow that, you know, he's, he could possibly become a great artist, which is so neat that you bring up that last point. Because I have students that are 14, 15, 16, 17, and even 18 years old because I have freshmen to seniors. And some of them kind of buy into the false idea that I didn't start drawing when I was 10. So I can never be an artist. So I can't do it. No, yeah. no, no. And, and Forget they, that. And they, Forget and, they, that. and they totally like come in, they, they think that. And I tried to tell them, no, like if you start, you can start today. And if you start today, like just think about it. And you, you come into high school and start drawing as a freshman. When you graduate high school, you have four years behind you. If you don't mm -hmm. even start till two years after high school, you know, I mean, it, it, at 20, you know, at 24, you're going to have four years behind you. And the amount that you can improve in arts just in a few years, if you're doing it Absolutely. consistently, is amazing. Absolutely. I, you know, I didn't start drawing these shadows until a year ago, yeah. okay? And yet it's my best work. And yet a year from now, I hope I'm doing my best work then no matter what that is. The greatest thing about, about, about life is that, one, it doesn't ever stop. But also, you know, if you've ever been lost before, you, you've been lost. Or you're driving around, you're walking around, you're like, oh, I don't know where i am anymore right where you literally have that panic like i am completely lost i don't know where i am i don't know how i'm going to get back yeah but where are you right now right now you are in the comfort of your own home so 
what I usually tell people is it doesn't matter how lost you get because you will always find your way back. You will always. So if you know you will always find your way back, you have every time up until now, why is now any different? Yeah. And I, and I just think that people tend to tell them, sell themselves short by thinking they have to have everything right now. And the other thing I, I like to tell people is that if you want to do something, then just start doing it. Yeah. There's nobody you've got to impress. There's nobody, you know, there's no rules you have to follow. Well, I mean, there's some rules, yeah. okay, of course. But the idea is if there's something you want to do, find a way to do it. Yeah. There's no better time than now. I, I wasn't drawing comics, you know, uh, until 10 years ago, right? So I wanted to learn. So I learned. Yeah. And it's like you didn't always walk. You didn't always drive. You didn't always eat with a fork. You don't remember having to get up and fall down, get up and fall down, get up and fall down. You're just walking now. You forget yeah. that at one point it was a struggle. So I'll tell everybody this. If there's something you want to do and it's worth it, then it's worth the struggle. And I'll tell you this too. My art, it, it, it improves my life. It doesn't matter that I'm, I'm not a millionaire. And I don't make tons of money on this. But what I love about it is it makes me a better person. Yeah. Every time I finish a piece of art that someone reacts to, I feel good in, a, in, an, in an area deep inside that I can't get from anything else. So when I show people a piece where you know uh, a, a, a woman's losing her father on a ventilator and she's looking at a picture of a long time ago and she's just so sad, but in that shadow is the memory that I'm always here and I've always got my little girl yeah. that I'll yeah. always be around. That piece is called Daddy's Got You because that's what that means. I am so proud of that piece just because of the fact that people see that and then go hug their parents. Yeah. you know, yeah. Or a parent will see that and say, see, this is how I'm always going to be here for you. And so that to me, I, I could have done that 15 years yeah. ago. And you're not, you know, you said it makes you a better person, but it also makes other people a better person as well to help them be able to reflect on those things. And, and even this piece right here I just pulled up, it's a husband and wife, and they're sitting on separate parts of the bed, and then the shadows come together, and it says, sorry. So that right there is a perfect example of looking at something and, and you know, making, you know, other people, you know, better or helping them. And this one right here, we have a woman in a walker, and then she's uh, going towards the table to get her coffee cup, but the challenge to her is so great where it's like she's running a marathon to the finish line. And then That's we right. have this one right here where, um, man, this one's just super, super touching. Um, a, a man in a um, wheelchair, and maybe he's a, I, may, I think he's a vet, so I'm not for sure. And then this woman is sitting on her knees at a table, and it's like he's the football player, and she's cheering him on. So if there's like, I mean, this is truly work that inspires other people um, to be better and not only just inspires people to be better those people that are already doing those great things it's really cheering them on as well where you have here's another one that's kind of like it you have a bully who's picking on a, a kid who's wearing a mickey mouse shirt and then there's this other guy who's coming along you know um and then this brings us to the last one because we're about out of time but for the last one that the audience is looking at is one of my favorites. <laughs> you have the original. And I actually, you know, I am so excited about uh, J.R. Mounts' artwork that I had to buy um, one um, original uh, piece <laughs> of his work. You can kind of see the size. See, they're a great that's size. That's the cover of the book, by the way. That, yeah. That's going to be the cover of the book. And I guess it's going to be the cover of the book, which is super awesome. It's also on the screen, so the... Um, everyone can see it. But this one to me, um, now my, my character that I draw a whole lot is the blue duck. And I yeah. hide the blue duck in a lot of my artwork. And it's, you know, I even have a blue duck in my studio back there. It's awesome. just kind of something I always include um, in my artwork. So when I saw this and I saw the ugly duckling, um, it just <laughs> really, I was like, man, I have to have that. I went and talked to my wife and I'm like, I. I think we should buy a piece of original artwork to add to our collection. And I showed it to her and she goes, I love it. And I was like, oh, thank you. Yeah. I was like, can, can we, should we get it? And she's like, yes, we need to get it. <laughs> so, so, and I've been showing her your work for a while. We've been talking about it. So I was like, man, I got to email uh, JR Mounts and, 
and ask him about purchasing one of these pieces. So well, um, thank you. And then, then I find out you tell me that this is the cover of the book, which just kind of makes it um, really exciting. And can you tell yeah. us about this book when it's coming out? Actually, I'm compiling the files right now. I just finished. Um, I've got two more pieces to do for it to make, get me at exactly 100. Because nice. uh, the goal was to hit 100 pieces without forcing it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And because the, the pieces have to come about naturally. And as I come up with the pieces, I'll put them in the book. The book is going to be compiled um, very soon. I'm going to do a, a, a crowdfunding event. Nice. Basically, so I just limit it to whoever just orders it through the crowdfunder. Maybe a couple more myself. Yeah. The end. But um, – but I find that that way people can be a part of something special that is limited, that won't be like wrong, put out through the ring or over and over and over. This is a special book, and this collection of pieces has so many different stories in it, some to make you feel, some to make you think, some to make you laugh, some that might make you cry. Um, but there are stories of real people in there. Every, every story in this, in this book has happened to somebody in some metaphor or non-metaphor uh, and I think that everybody's got uh, got a great story to tell, and hopefully I represent them well. Yeah. Because I think uh, people have the most interesting stories, better than Batman, better than Spider Man. I like to know what makes people tick. Yeah, and and this is this is real stuff that you you illustrate, and you do it in such a fun and um, comic style, which which I love. And a lot of times, you know, when I'm looking at um, comic art. It's, it's kind of frustrating because I love comic style artwork and, you know, I love the comics, you know, um, you know, I'm a big Charles Schultz fan and oh, um, yeah. we, my wife and I, for our first road trip together, went up to the um, Charles Schultz uh, Museum in oh, Santa Rosa, um, loved that. But a lot of times nowadays when you look for comics, it's either just as superheroes or sometimes yeah. it's kind of just um, inappropriate, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, yours yeah. is funny. And then it is very, very, very true to life, where it's very emotional, um, which kind of really makes your work um, outstanding from a lot of work that we see out there. So, um, well, thank you, thank you, man, thank you for creating such great works. And once again, this is J.R. Mounts, and this collection is the Shadows of Ourselves. We have an awesome book here coming out eventually, so be checking on that. And thank you so much for hanging out with us today on Trips Art Class. Thank you, Mr. Tripp.